In this video, I'm going to extend what we've already discussed for the Dirichlet problem to include Neumann boundary conditions, and then I'll also generalize the methods for homogeneous Dirichlet and homogeneous Neumann conditions to the inhomogeneous version of both of those. So what I've got here already on the page is just a summary of what we've seen already, and that is um, we're looking at um, uh, the diffusion equation and we're using an initial condition u of x and 0 is equal to f of x. And here I've just drawn a sort of cartoon example of what an initial condition might look like, although um, this one would be pretty challenging to calculate a Fourier series for. Um, and so what I covered in the previous video was the case of uh, homogeneous Dirichlet boundary conditions, that is, u of 0 and t is equal to u of l and t, and both of those are equal to 0. And uh, what we found in that case was that the solution should be built up from sine functions, which are the eigenvectors uh, for that particular case that are useful. And the formula we came to for the bn quantities, the coefficients in front of the um, you know, in front of the terms of each of the sum in the sum is um, this slightly different version of the Fourier series coefficients that we had before. Now remember the Fourier coefficient series uh, or the Fourier coefficient formulas that we had before were under the assumption that you're dealing with some periodic function and it'll have sine and cosine terms both. What we're doing here is we're cooking up the functions so that it will be symmetric in the right ways to give us only sine terms in that series. So, and I call this the extension behind the scenes because you can get away with just using these formulas, but the reason those formulas give us what we want is because we've extended the function in this way. So let me go over what that extension idea is in this case again, and then we'll take that and use the same idea to figure out what the coefficients should be for the Neumann boundary conditions. Okay, so uh, if we started off with, let's say this function here, just defined between zero and L, then um, we could just find a Fourier series, but if we just pretended that that was periodic of period L, so we just take this shape here and repeat it here and here and here, then you would get something that has both cosines and sines in it. And we don't want to have cosines and sines. So before we say it's periodic, we're gonna first extend it so that it's odd around the origin. So it's an odd function. And then we take this whole function here and repeat that periodically. And because we extended it across the origin to minus L to zero in an odd way, if you were to calculate the cosine coefficients, they'd all come out to zero. So all we're left with is the sine terms in that sum. And so this is a way of ensuring that um, even though the initial condition is only defined from zero to L, we still get uh, a Fourier series for our, our, um, uh, our solution that only includes sine terms. Okay, so the same idea is gonna be pretty useful when we consider uh, Neumann boundary conditions like these over here. So here we have the derivative of u with respect to x is equal to zero, as is at zero and at l are both equal to zero. So in other words, we have no flux boundary conditions at each of the endpoints. Um, and so uh, because we want to have no flux boundary conditions, we're really interested in having the series that we use to build our solution involve only cosine functions because the cosine functions will all have zero slopes at the endpoints. So if we start with some function that's just defined from zero to L, let's say this very same shape that we had before, and we want to ensure that we have Fourier series that only include the cosine terms, then what we want to do this time, instead of extending it as an odd function like we did for the Dirichlet case, we're going to extend it down here to minus L. 
and we're going to extend it so that it's an e it becomes an even function. And once we have that even function between minus L and L, then we can paste this over and turn it into a periodic function and start looking for the Fourier coefficients for the cosine series. So this is now going to go all the way up to 3L here. And you can see I've got two periods now, but really the function in this region is the one I care about having so that the initial condition is solved and the evenness here, and really also here, I mean, that just comes for free because we've chosen the boundaries the right place. Um, that ensures that we solve the uh, boundary conditions with our Fourier series. Okay, so uh, what that tells us then is that the coefficients that we need to, to use here, so for example, A0, A0 is gonna just be the standard Fourier coefficient for uh, the periodic function starting from minus L to L. So that is going to have a formula 1 over 2L integral from minus L to L of F. Now, this original one here is going to be F of X. That's what's given as my initial condition. This new one that I've extended out in two ways, first to minus L and then repeated periodically, is the one that I want to have here because F is not defined. This function F is just the one that's defined between 0 and L, and I need to go... To, uh, you needed to use fx to extend it out here, right? That's the name I gave it out there. And so now I have x fx of x, <laughs> cosine n pi x over l dx. But that is the same as twice this. So I put a 2 in the numerator, but that just cancels the 2 in the denominator. And now just taking the integral from 0 to L, because this is an even function, x, fx is an even function, and so I can just calculate the integral in half and double it. And now, because I'm only using the values of fx from 0 to L, I can replace that again by f of x. And I have the cosine n pi x over L dx. So that's the a0. And then similarly, I'll just do this up here, a n will be, instead of just being 1 over L, integral from minus L to L of f x of x cosine n pi x over L dx, we can do that same double trick and we'll get 2 over L integral from 0 to L, just half of that even function's integral, f of x cosine n pi x over L dx. So now let's consider um, these two cases here, the inhomogeneous boundary conditions. Um, and so let me put those over on the next page. So we have u sub t equal d u x x, and I'll do the conditions u of zero and t, that's equal to let's say um, u naught, and u of l and t is equal to u sub l. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit more complicated because we don't get these values here out of the Fourier sine series because the Fourier sine series is zero in the ends. However, we're still going to use those, but what we have to add to that, now we're going to take u of x and t. And now let me just go back and point out that um, this solution here, which is almost what we want, but it doesn't quite satisfy the boundary conditions, because these lambda values were all negative, you remember those lambda values were uh, lambda n was minus n squared pi squared over L squared multiplied by D. So because they're all negative, as time goes on, this entire solution is going to converge to zero. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have um, all those pieces in there for the transient part of the solution, but then we're going to add into that, we're going to add, um, now what do we call it here? Uh, did I have it? No, okay, so I'm just going to give it, I think we called it bx plus a naught plus the sum of, from n equal 1 to infinity, of dn e to the lambda nt sine of n pi x over L. The idea here is that all of these pieces here satisfy zero boundary conditions, 
So as long as I choose this function here, which is also an eigen function that has a zero uh, eigenvalue, um, we can have the, in, the um, initial condition satisfied by the whole thing. The boundary conditions will all be satisfied by uh, zeros here plus something that satisfies the u0 and ul. So in other words, we're going to make sure that bx plus a0, which I'll call the steady state u of x, uss of x. So I'm going to make sure that uss of 0 is equal to u0 and that uss of l is equal to u sub l. So what does that mean? That means that we have to choose, now here we're going to have b times 0 plus a0. So a0 is just going to be u0. And then now we have our a0. Now I have b times l plus u0. And then that means that I have to choose b equal to, uh, let's see, uh, right, so b then has to be u l minus u naught all divided by l. And so my steady state is going to be a straight line, and that straight line will always satisfy the boundary conditions, and then the sign terms are not going to mess that up because they're zero, all they're all zero at the endpoints. So this is going to be u sub l minus u of zero over l all multiplied by x plus u naught. So my solution is going to be u of x and t given by u sub l minus u of 0 over l x plus u naught plus the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of bn e to the lambda n t sine of n pi x over l. Now we still have to figure out what those bn values are, and we can't just make this equal to the Fourier series when you plug in t equals zero, make that the Fourier series of the initial condition, because we have to account for this linear term that we've now added. But if we just plug in zero for t here, you can see that we get ul minus u naught over l times x plus u naught plus some bn sine n pi x over l, and that whole thing has to be equal to f of x. Oh yeah, I didn't, I didn't copy that over here, so u of x and 0 initial condition is f of x. And so what I can do is, here is a sine series that I know how to calculate coefficients for, and it looks to me like if I take f of x and subtract this off, so then I bring it over to the other side and I say that the sum of bn sine n pi x over l, that has to be equal to the initial condition minus ul minus u naught over l x minus u naught. And now if I then calculate this thing, which is the initial condition minus the steady state, and find its Fourier series, that's what's going to give me the bn terms that I can then go back and plug in up here. And that is how we deal with these inhomogeneous cases, like, like what we were dealing with in this uh, boundary value problem here.